Brought to you by Curious Rhineland. So, the question is, what are the characteristics of living things? What does this actually mean? What makes something alive? So, take a second, think about it, talk to your partners, and uh, we've got 30 seconds, think about what makes characteristics of living things, and I'll give a show of hands. You can use yourself as a frame of reference. I'm alive because... And we're back. Okay, so that's another feature I wanted to test. So, hey, what makes something alive? They breathe. They breathe. Okay, do all living things breathe, though? No. Not the way we do. Okay. Respiration, that's a more accurate term. That's good. All right. So what, what you want to do is don't filter everything through the human perspective. There's a million animal species, and that's only one of one of the six kingdoms. There's actually six kingdoms. When your parents were on that side of the desk, there was might have been only four or five. And that's an aspect of biology called classification. So let's start here. Here are the notes. Let's just get all this down, and then we're going to add to it. So I'm going to give you a second to get this all copied down. All right, so we're going to go back to that list, and now what I want to do is add some stuff to the list. So um, you got that generic list. I'm going to give you some additional little features. This, these are some things that you should associate with them. So thinking about it like this. Um, okay, so cell organization, right? All living things are made up of cells. That is one of the things that we call the cell theory, one of the parts of the cell theory. And there's actually six components of the modern cell theory. It used to be three. Okay, so th there you can have a whole organism be unicellular, and everything they do is wrapped up in what they can do with that one cell. They don't interact, they don't rely on other cells. Of course, we're multicellular, so that's a, that's when you have multicellular, that means you're gonna have a specialization of tissue. Uh, you know I teach anatomy. If you look at my room, you'll see all these different models, and over on, over there, you'll see there's uh, this tissue called epithelium and connective, and th that's cells combining to make the whole, so to speak. All right, now, for a reproduction, we should say what? That is, what is that is reproduction? Reproducing, what does that mean? Reproducing. Making more? All right, so we're going to learn that there's actually asexual reproduction, and there's also sexual reproduction. All right? And guys, for the sake of uh, space, I'm going to abbreviate up here. As I said last class period, you should always write out everything. Uh, anything I abbreviate, I'm always saying. Make your notes your notes. Okay, so having said this, uh, think about it like this. You all right? You're asexually reproducing right now. It's called mitosis. We're multicellular. A unicellular organism can make another copy of itself, and it is a clone, all right? But all living things have a mode of sexual reproduction. Bacteria even have a means of sexual reproduction. Even bacteria do it, all right? And so what is sexual reproduction? It's the exchange of genes from two sources. The level of complexity gets more it gets more elaborate with more complex organisms. Plants and animals have more complex reproductive cycles than say a bacteria. And a bacteria will spend more time asexually reproducing and uh, making clones. They can double their population in 20 minutes. This is one of the reasons when you take antibiotics, you should run the course. You know, you have a five day course, day three, you're like, I feel better now, but then you some of those bacteria survived. And your, your own body's micro, what we call your micro ecosystem, is evolution in action because some of them survived and reproduced, and now you're going to have, have to have a higher, higher dose of antibiotic. All right? So I'm going to jump around. It's going to seem like I'm jumping around, but I'm trying to get you to understand. This is a list of characteristics of living things in which, in which you should say, hey, all living things blank. They have, they're made up of cells or one or more cells. All living things have a mode of reproduction. All living things have a metabolism. So what is metabolism? Yes. 
The way you burn fat, okay, that's that's a that's part of it. Now that is that involves a whole bunch of chem biochemical reactions, all right? So when you think of metabolism, think about um, basically the sum total. Some people say the sum total of your biochemical reactions, all right? It is it is. Think about metabolism is your body's biochemistry. All right now, I'm not going to fit this on there, but I'll say it. All right, it's basically linking all your biochemical reactions. All right, some people will say call it the sum total of all your biochemical reactions. All right, you mentioned burning fat. That involves chemistry and physical, mechanically breaking down the stuff that you chew up and gets down here and gets broken into smaller bits. But then, chemically, it gets changed. It's physical and chemical change, and then you break it into its components that you will later absorb. That's part of digestion. And what you don't absorb, you get rid of. Okay. Homeostasis. Mr. Matheny. What's your way for homeostasis? Homeostasis. That means balance, okay? Balance. Homeostasis, you say balance. Ready? Homeostasis, balance. Homeostasis, balance. Homeostasis, balance. Homeostasis, balance. Okay. Balance. Homeostasis. Yes, you guys look thrilled about doing this, and I should have filmed it. But all right, so balance, and then we're going to put in parentheses, and uh, you should hear this, and then write it in internal. This is going to move down here a little. Internal regulation. Internal regulation. All right. Uh, my anatomy students, we learn, we actually use homeostasis as the basis for a lot of things. We call it homeostatic balance or imbalance. Imbalance means something's not working, and you have to do something to to fix it. Okay. What about heredity? What is heredity? Yes. All right. Things that your parents pass on to you. Okay. What it, it's yes, it is it is measuring or the passage of genes. All right. So the passing on of genes. Okay. Um, Can you link it back to something else? Can you link it back to any of these other characteristics? And that's the thing we want you to grasp is you ought to be able to link things back. Yes? Okay, so you can link this back to reproduction. Right? You can link it back to reproduction. Okay, so think, think about responsiveness now. And I'm going to tell you that, all right, so the old, they used to actually call it, all right, so they used to call it um, respond to stimulus, all right? But what are the notes that I just gave you say? What do they say? Responsiveness, right? Responsiveness. All right, so if you look over here, right here, stimulus and response used to be the category. Our textbook calls it responsiveness because we realize that there's, uh, it's, it's more complex than just you react to stimuli, which is a good way of remembering it. All right, we, we say all living things react to stimuli. <laughs> See, bam, you are alive. You just reacted to the stimulus I gave you. Last year, someone reacted so much they fell out of their seat. Um, it happens. All right, so um, now, What's really happening here is you can imagine this. You there's you're, you can talk about the other characteristics of living beings. All right, homeostasis is kicking in because maybe there's a short little increase in your heart rate for a second. Right, then that's going like that. Homeostasis is going to now bring it back down because evolutionary wise, you're like okay, we'll react. Okay, they're okay. I'm not going to die. The perceived danger is over. Let's come back down until he does something again like that. But all right, so. The point is, 
these are we we used to say stimulus, but stimulus and response, right? There's some stimulus you react. You react to stimulus, right? That's something that all living things do. Now, how they actually do it is different. When we played with the millworms, some of you are like, oh well, it's not reacting the way I want. That's because they are not reacting the way you want, but they're reacting the way they should. All right. Um, so adapt to environment. Adapt to just everyday stimulus. These two right here. Let's see if you can answer. So this is like the instant reaction, right? In the moment, right? And I'm not going to write this on this show, but you, if you want to, go ahead and do so. Uh, this is like in the moment. These two are, these two right here are more long term. Like, as you, right? so I would say this is shorter term, like, okay, uh, it, it, it's starting to get colder, colder now. We're in the fall. So you're going to start wearing, you know, you're not going to wear shorts to school every day, probably, as it gets colder. Now, this right here, adaptation, you can go back to heredity. You can go back to heredity and you can go back to sexual reproduction because the genes that are favorable are when reproduction occurs are going to be passed on and sent to the next generation. That's all part of your you as an individual, but you, us as a species, how living things respond short term. So again, this would be short term, and I, you don't need to write this down, but I, I, short. this is going to be a little more like short term in the moment, and then this is kind of in between, and this is long term, and really, when I say about long term, this is actually never really affects it individuals. Evolution affects population. It doesn't affect individuals. We'll get to that when we go through. Really, today's notes is like a preview of everything we're going getting into. All right? We talk about metabolism. We could be talking about, we'll talk about cell, re cell uh, respiration and photosynthesis and digestion. And then we'll talk about balancing your sugar levels. I'm a diabetic. I have to watch my sugar. That's a homeostatic imbalance. Uh, my, my sugar can be high, we call it hyper, or my sugar can be low, we call it hypo. We'll learn those terms, all right? Uh, homeostasis, we'll talk about something called uh, osm osmosis. What's osmosis? What do you remember about osmosis? Yes? Is it when water uh, passes out of cells? Well, or in. Cells. Out or in cells. Movement of water across the membrane. Okay. So the last one, growth and development, growth and development, all right, so growth is you're, getting, you're increasing the number of cells and getting larger in size. Development is those cells specializing. All right, let's go back to the millworms, for example. All right, the millworms, think about it like this, right? So the millworms, have, they can be larvae or they can be pupa, and they can also be uh, beetles. So the, the larvae, as you first saw, that's all you saw when you observed them. Right? So they're getting larger, 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 and then they're a certain size, then they're going to shed skin. Right? Then what's going to happen is they're going to they're going to look a little look bit like ghost, and they're not moving. But inside, there's a lot of development going on. All right? There's genes are turning on and off to shift it towards becoming a beetle, and then it's going to emerge as a beetle. So that's growth, part of growth and development. All right? You start out as one fertilized egg, and you're going to grow and grow and grow and grow. And then cells are going to specialize as you go through. That's what growth and development is. All living things have a mode or means of growth and development. All right. So let's direct our attention now to your project. Okay. So, this is due next class for you if you want to write your due date. So that's due Monday for you. Tuesday for my evening classes. All right, so you got, we have the seven characteristics of living things based on the notes that we just copied down, like this. You're going to pick five of them. And you're going to... Yeah, so five viewable slides. So when you're looking at a tissue box, all right, all tissue boxes have, what, six sides? So I see one for your name. One for your name. And then, so let's look at what this person did. 
So response to environment or response to stimulus, they've got their written text and they have information. So you've got to have, let's, let's see what else she has. Look at this one. I just talked about growth and development. Look at, well, look at what she, should, she did for this. She put growth and development, so written description and some and some pictures. And then she actually showed, she's actually showing two things which aren't showing up on this. As well. Here's another person's. Okay. Here's another person's growth and development. That that pretty much says it, doesn't it? Okay. Now I'm not showing this to you just for you to copy that person's thing. You can be as creative as possible. All right. You, if you, those of you who like to draw, there's there's three components. That you have, you have to have um, you have to have typed not typed. You have to have handwritten or typed. That's fine. You have to have obviously the name of the characteristic you're doing. You need to have, have good written information. And there is a on the back of your handout is a rubric. If you want, all right. So here's the here's the sequence that you're really going to follow. The rubric's on the next page, but um, and all this you can get from your textbook. I'm I'm promising you you will say, maximize your time if you start your textbook first, and then if you decide to use other resources like the web, what you need to do. If you give me information that's not from your textbook, what do you need to do? Cite, Cite your sources. So um, there's a couple ways you can do that. And I, if you want to cite it at the bottom of each one, or you want to find where you did your name and just do that, do your name and all the sources there, we're real flexible. And look, it doesn't have to be a full tissue box. All right? Um, it can be... Um, it doesn't have to be a full tissue box. It could be uh, just an empty one. So if you got empty, you don't have to bring in tissues. Or if you want to bring a different type of box. That's pretty much it. So here's here's your rubric on the back. And yeah, that's pretty much pretty much it. Any questions? All right.